The future will be here before we know it, and now's a great time to talk about quantum computing. There are several qubit technologies out there, but there's only one that's built on transistor technology, and that's the one Intel is focusing on. That's what we do. And our silicon spin qubit approach taps into Intel's deep know-how in how to develop transistor technologies and leverages our decades of experience in manufacturing transistors and as Pat says, exploiting every element on the periodic chart when we need to go there. And so, um, you know, the, the, real, the real thing is we're not there yet, but you know, people ex have different theories about when, the, when we'll get to the quantum computing revolution, but we know it's coming and we're doing this fundamental research. So, um, let's see, what I wanna do, let's go to the next slide. Um, our goal has always been to drive long-term research between Intel Labs and our component research team and to get to, to large-scale commercial quantum computing implementation. And to achieve commercial relevance, these systems need to scale to over a million qubits to be really what we call you know, quantum efficient or quantum practicality. And so we want to get to that point. So what I'm going to show you is something ultra, ultra cool, a glimpse into the future. You saw it here first. This is a 300 millimeter wafer from our research lab. Let me see if I can zone in the light here to give you a sense of what, you're going to, what you see. There's 10,000 quantum arrays on this 300 millimeter wafer. So this is, this is a glimpse at the future. And so our, but I, I, while well, this is, there you go, there's a really great shot of it. This is, oh, this is really <laughs> ultra cool. And uh, actually my first month in the company, uh, I went up to the quantum computing research lab just to, to see the actual thing in action because I was so excited by this part. Um, but, uh, and, and while this is cool, you know, it's only good if, it, if the quality of the transistors and the efficacy of what we can get off of a yield is effective. Well, so there's, it turns out, there's a tremendous amount of innovation going around just in the technology, not just to produce this, but to actually test it. Because you have to test it at four degrees Kelvin. So you don't want to stick your finger into the test lab. It'll, it'll, it'll immediately freeze, break off. Is we have something called Horse Ridge, which is we've miniaturized and can run and can provide this, this uh, t t test each quantum uh, array with uh, at four degrees Kelvin inside the test chamber itself where you actually would run the quantum calculations. And bef before this, we had like a half a room full of a kit, right, with a bunch of sort of cables having to go and transition from, you know, modern term thermals to sub, sub, sub Kelvin, um, four degrees Kelvin kernel uh, cables and sort of to test everything, which perturbs the environment. So this device actually sits inside the cryogenic chamber so we can actually test every wafer, every chip on that wafer. So this in itself is a piece of innovation on which we patented. So anyway, so let's talk briefly about quantum computing software because uh, you know, I have my Intel Nook at home and one of the things uh, we're announcing today is our quantum SDK for quantum simulation so that you developers can download the quantum SDK and this account allows developers to program quantum algorithms using simulated qubits. The SDK consists of the Intel quantum compiler that's written in C++, so if you're a C++ programmer, when we talk about accelerated computing, you can, you can sort of simulate you know, what accelerated computing can look like. It's a standard LLVM-based runtime with quantum extensions, and we provide this uh, to running, you can run it on your laptop, and these elements create a full-stack quantum computer in simulation. And uh, let's take a look at it in operation. I'm just gonna hit the return key here really quick so you can see on the screen, sort of, uh, where's the uh, prompt? Okay, we've got a little demo glitch here. But basically, I could run the algorithm, and essentially what it will do is it'll generate uh, 333 million states. And we have the ability to simulate that. So what I'm gonna do, I've downloaded it on my, on my Intel Nook at home, and, uh, oh, there it goes, it ran. So, uh, sorry, I was just a little bit late. Um, I was a little bit impatient, actually, that's normal for me. <laughs> when is it done? When's the code ready? When can we ship it? So. Uh, so basically what we have is that, that I wanna basically run the demo version as I just did, run the algorithm, and finally you can see there are two resulting states. And this gives, but this 25 quantum states gives you 33 million states. So I, I have a dog named Jeffrey, and ever since we've got him, he's a rescue dog. I mean, I'm just convinced that he's like an alien from another planet, because he doesn't act like a dog. He just barks, he doesn't bark, he doesn't sort of act like a normal dog. So I'm, I'm working on a simulation for a quantum wormhole so I can teleport him back to his home planet. So before I finish talking about quantum computing, let's just touch briefly on security. I'm actually well over time, but basically, as we've been following the press, the NIST has been working to standardize quantum resistant algorithms. They just announced, you know, for, for symmetric crypto, you know, some, some proposed algorithms. 
And the Intel's Ice Lake processor today and our future processors will support, we already support AES-256, which helps you with your data at rest problem to encrypt it so that you don't, if somebody takes it today, they don't, it's harder for them to decrypt it with a quantum computer in the future. And, um, but we really want to make our whole platform quantum resistant, quantum ready by well before 2030. So can't give you the specific dates of when that'll all happen, but we're working hard with NIST, we're working hard inside. We have the crypto experts. We've been a leader in this area forever. And so we'll make sure that all of our products are quantum resistant. And so the, these, you know, President Biden made an announcement that, you know, we want to get there by 20, 20, 2030. And uh, so we're going to be ready. And we call it, y, Pat calls it Y2Q. Okay, so the, we, don't, we don't want the millennium bug problem. We, want, we don't want the quantum computing problem. So we're going to be Y2Q ready, quantum resistant by 2030 across our portfolio.